In Ephesians chapter 5, we find some very challenging words, but they also introduce us to some important concepts. And I'd like for you to think as we're reading this, what is the most precious commodity? And then we'll follow up with that. Is it possible to extend that commodity? And if so, what should we do with it? So if you have your Bibles, turn if you will to Ephesians chapter 5. And I'll begin reading with verse 8. Here you hear the apostle say, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. I would choose a text that would be this verse. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Look at verse 16 again. After the apostle mentions the type of characters that we are in Christ, and after he tells us how we should be a light and how we should avoid darkness, he reminds us that we ought to be awake. Have our eyes open. Be aware. Be alert. See what's going on around you. And then after he says this, he says that we are to walk circumspectly. I don't think that necessarily means with your shoulders back. I think it means that a person should walk uh, with full awareness of the life that they are living, the life that they are shining, and the work that they are doing, and the glory they are bringing to the Lord. But then, he gives this thought. Redeeming the time. Now think of that word. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. First, I want to ask you, and this verse kind of answers it, but I would venture to say that I asked you what was the most important commodity Two-thirds of you said, gold, I don't have much of it, so it must be precious. I never did get too much of it in life. Um, how many of you said gold? Well, see your hands. You're thinking in terms of gold. You didn't? Silver? Well, my goodness. Did you think time? No hands on time either. Paul here tells us, redeeming the time. The most precious commodity that you have is time. As a matter of fact, when you take a breath, you may be taking the last one of your time. We don't know when it's coming. But when we think of the preciousness of time, How many of you got a watch on this morning? I'm like the old preacher. He said he didn't mind people looking at their watch while he was preaching. It bothered him when they hung them up, hung them up and shook them. <laughs> Time. Not only do you have it on your hands, I, I was thinking that in each room of our house, we probably have some kind of a timepiece. For first of all, if we're wearing a clock or a watch, We've got that thing ticking on our hands or even a fob in a pocket. Um, we may even have it hanging around our neck. But you know, whatever you go to think about, you've got your calendars. How many calendars you got stung around the house? Or on your desk, if you have a desk, a desk calendar. 
or whatever we go thinking in terms of time, how many of us potentially could get in trouble because we're not on time or think that we got enough time to get to work on time? So time is critical. It's important to us. Matter of fact, it's something that if you're not careful, you can take for granted. But the Apostle James reminds us in chapter 5, Go to now, ye who say that today or tomorrow we shall go into such a city and tarry there for a year, buy, and sell, and get gain. Because he says, what is your life? Is even as a vapor that's on the sea, pure for a little season, and vanishes away. For that you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will do such and such. So it's important for us to remember that probably the most important commodity that we have is time. And we probably regulate it as much and as close as possible with clocks, with calendars, with stomachs. Hear that from the men up here. <laughs> <laughs> Women know when it's time to start fixing supper. I hear Jan say frequently, time to get started. So we have our lives regulated with time. I read a little poem one time, and the title of it was Dash. And what it meant was you take your birthday, 1931 for me, and you end up, I don't know where it's going to be on the end of it, but we don't know. But the writer of that poem said there's a dash between the day you were born and your death. And most all of your life is crowded into that one dash. So time is important to us. The second question I'm going to ask you is can you really redeem time? When you go to thinking about redemption, it means a buying back that which you may have already disposed of or got rid of or redeeming. I remember when we would go to the grocery store, they don't do that anymore, but they would give what is called trading stamps. And you would take those stamps and take them home and lick them Stick them in a little book, and when you got the book home, you take those books and you would redeem them. You would turn them in. You would buy something with it. And uh, you'd get all kinds of little things to put around the house, or hang on the wall, and etc. But uh, you know what that word means, redeem? Can you really redeem time? Wouldn't we like to? Tennyson is one who wrote a poem one time, and he's he reasoned would break, break, break upon the shores, O sea. And as he would rehearse various things, when he could hear almost the sea as it's breaking upon the shores, he would be claimed that, Oh, for the sound of a voice that was near, dear, and for the touch of a hand that was near. How many of us would like, as our brother sings often, I'd like to be able to see that go back and sing with mom or dad or visit, share, and fellowship. How many of us frequently as we walk through the house glance at a picture and all of a sudden a wave of nostalgia just simply floats all over us and we remember someone and we actually find ourselves catching a silent song within our heart. We would like for time to move back, to redeem time. Can't do it. You can't move back. How many of you can think of times that you had privileges of making a wise investment and you didn't? And 20 or 30 years later, you'd like to go back and redeem that time. Have an opportunity to recoup the loss that perhaps that you have made. How many of you can think of opportunities that you have that have passed by that you'd like to recoup that opportunity that you passed by? Yes, the sound of a voice, the touch of a hand, the feeling of a loved one that was so dear, the opportunity to recoup something that you may fail. We find that what Paul says, redeem in the time. You can't bring it back. 
There is a scene that of a Greek god by the name of Mercury, and he was seen with the wings over his head. You've probably seen pictures of him because he was a messenger god and had hands over his eyes. And someone asked the question, why is this that the speediest God, the Mercury, who was the messenger, would have his hands over his eyes? He said, because he re represents time that once passed. It's forever gone. need to recognize opportunities, privileges, blessings that God has given to us now. And Paul, in a sense, is saying, awake! Stir yourself. Become aware. Know the brevity of life. But know the preciousness of time. Yeah. Know those that you love around you. Your brothers, your sisters in Christ. Encourage and build each other up in the faith. Encourage each other to live the right kind of a life. Remember that the Lord is the one who has saved you, redeemed you from your Amen. sins, given you peace. Amen. And you like to, as you remember Him, to make your life count while you have the privilege because you don't know what tomorrow will be. Amen. But we know all that we have, all that you can bank on is what you have right now. And Paul is saying, just be aware of that and live as saints of God. Live as those who have light. Live as those who are salt of the earth. Live as those who are the apple of his eye. Live as those who are redeemed. Live as those who are God's chosen people. Let the world know that you are his church and let them be aware of it. Is there a way then that we can redeem time? I want to suggest some things that Jesus said that when you hear wars all around you, when you see natural phenomena so every lasting unusual like the hurricane we just experienced or like earthquakes that can occur or all kinds of phenomena that's in nature that seem to be unusual that's really staggering to the mind. When you see social uh, upheavals in your community and in your world, when the world seems to be falling all around you, what is it time for? Time to run? No. Jesus said, lift up your heads for your redemption draws down. When things look hopeless, when things look like they're falling apart, remember God's still on His throne. Amen. That God still holds the future Amen. in His hand. Amen. That with God there is no such thing as time. Amen. And we're headed time to the timeless shores of eternity Amen. where we can serve the Lord and enjoy Amen. His presence while the ceaseless ages roll on. Then with that in mind, can we redeem the time? We can by being the child of God that God wants us to be. We can by being that person who is faithful to the work that the Lord has given you to do. We can by trying to bring our loved ones into the knowledge of Christ. Living the life in front of them, being the example, and encouraging them. We can by letting our light shine in a darkened world in such a way that they know that there is a God who is living within our hearts and throbbing within us. Yes. So as we feel the marks of time, you ever go to a mirror and look in? You wonder who that is looking back at you. Yeah. When it gets to be that point and you don't see what you think that you, do, you do, remember that He's still on the throne. He's still got a will and a plan for your life. And we need to make time very critical and important to us. And I will suggest one closing thing. That probably the most important event in anyone's life, in that dash between the time you're born and the time you die, one of the most critical events in all that time there's a song that says, you, were, you, were, you die once, but you were born twice. Do you know that you're twice born? Do you know Christ is your personal Savior? Are you ready for eternity? Are you ready where time will be no more? Are you ready where there will be no problems or difficulties to be set at? Are you ready for the land that is fairer than day? Are you ready for heaven? 
Are you ready to stand before the Lord and give account of your lives? Our brother was testifying a while ago. Is your name in the Lamb's book of life? Do you know that you're saved? That's what I'm asking. If you don't, well, Jeff gets a song. And you put your hand on your pulse and feel throb. Place your hand over your heart and feel it pumping. Take a deep breath and be able to think and know that you're alive. Hey, if you haven't made it right with God, now's the time to do it. You don't know about tomorrow, you do know about now. So I plead with you as one who does not know Christ as your Savior to come today and let Him come into your life and save you from your sin. More important than your father, more important than your family is your soul.